Hello. Good afternoon. I think it's just about three o'clock. Time to get our next town hall going. Seems like we were just here two weeks ago. I think we were actually. We looked at the schedule and want to get back on more of a normal schedule for the town hall compared to what they used to be. So go back to the, the first Wednesday of the month. So this will be the going forward until the new person starts. And they may decide to change it someplace too. So we'll see how that goes too. Why don't we open up with a real question we have to get solved. We've noticed over in the Parkview area, Parkview entrance, we're missing some pillows. <laughs> So I think we have what you call a real pillow gate going on. Um, nobody wants to fess up to it. So if you happen to borrow some pillows from that area, you can return them and we won't prosecute. Um, but the people who play Mahjong and Bridge over there are missing their pillows. So anybody want to raise their hand? Nobody wants to fess up, okay. Last chance, anybody want to fess up upon the, no? okay. Well, if you did, if you see them, know where they are, uh, let us know or put them back you know, midnight tonight and we won't uh, worry about it going forward. Um, we have a special guest with us this morning as well. My boss, Nan Nyman, is here today to uh, kind of kick off the main part of our meeting before we get to the rest of the director's reports, but uh, Dan and, uh, is Tamika here? Tamika going to uh, kick us off today, so thank you. Actually, I think you're officially my boss right now. <laughs> uh, for those of you in there, everyone should have received some communication yesterday. Um, unfortunately, we had a, another departure from a senior level position. Uh, Adrian Oliver, our uh, associate executive director, um, over the weekend um, decided to, to leave us and we were greeted with a resignation on Monday morning. And so um, we're, very, we're very sad about that. We understand she's got some, some personal family issues going on that she needs to attend to and um, we hope that she can get that resolved and, and uh, get back on her feet. Um, so let's get that out of the air quickly and in the interim, um, you have me as your associate executive director. Um, Actually, licensed nursing home administrator and licensed assisted living administrator. My, my license is going to hang for a while until we uh, finish that recruitment and get a, either a, 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 a more uh, long-term interim or we are able to replace that position uh, permanently. Um, so that's why I'm actually Jeff's associate ED for a while. It's interesting. He's got a lot more experience than me, so I think that, that works well. Um, and so um, I guess I'd like to ask, that's where we are with that. I'd like Tamika to come up and just give us an update on um, our, our CAR for accreditation, the, the, um, the, the, the accreditation survey we just went through a few weeks back, as well as our Medicare certification process and where we are with that. And then we can take some Q&A afterwards. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Tamika Ross, the Director of Nursing and Health Services. Um, like Dan stated, we had our CARF um, certification a few weeks ago. Um, it, it went pretty well. We was able to um, show that our processes that we have here is at that quality standard for CARF. We really didn't have any issues or recommendations in the health services area, so that was great. Um, as far as the Medicare process, we're working towards that every day, but I told Dan today, I'm ready. I'm ready for it to happen. Um, I think we're, we are as ready as we're going to be. Um, I'm pretty proud of the team and all of the work that um, everyone has put in, and we just have to continue that every single day um, so that we can get this certification done. Um, we did have our mock survey with the Mary Childs group. It's a consulting group that comes to look at the processes that we have. Um, and they look at every process that we have. Um, and it was on February the 16th and February the 17th. Um, and we had good results from that as well. We did have a few um, recommendations as far as, you know, we could chart a little bit better or um, with the marriage house group, they, they want us to dot every I and cross every T, so it's perfection. So we have um, gone back to the, the team 
for education um, on the recommendations that they made, but the recommendation from the Merit Childs Group was that we're ready as well. So um, what we do every single day over in health services is really paying off, um, and I think it's something for us to be proud of. Um, we're moving forward with that Medicare process. I know that Adrian's not here with us anymore, but um, we're ready and we're gonna continue to move forward with that so nothing's changed as far as that process. Um, do you all have any questions for me or we wait until the end? Any questions? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> I always have a question. I'd like to talk a little bit about the success that we've had in the past three weeks of Zero Agency. Well, agency was a big topic for a little while. Um, uh, we have not had any agency at Cedarfield since uh, the last day was February the 5th. So that's something to be very, very proud of. Again, that was um, Stephanie and Madison, we all, and the team, we all worked together for recruitment um, and getting the team members that we hired through the process. Um, and that's how we were able to um, get agency out of Cedarfield, but um, that's something that we're extremely proud of. We do have some of our new team members that we're continuing to work through um, the education and training process. Um, it's a multitude of things that nurses have to be trained on, so we continue to work through that every single day, but I'm super proud about the, um, the quality of the nurses that we brought, brought onto the team. We have um, uh, a massive amount of background, different backgrounds. Some of them have worked in the ICU, some of them have been quality, um, quality care nurses in, um, in other facilities, ran ERs. So we have a multitude of um, specialty nurses that are working with us now, and they're happy to be at Cedarfield. They um, are impressed with the person-centered care that um, we offer in health services, so they're happy about it, and so are we. We've got a question over here. When will we see the written report from CARF? We will see the written report from CARF in six to eight weeks, well, probably five to seven weeks now, because it's, it's been a few weeks out. Um, it has to go, it's similar to JCO in the hospital. Um, it has to go through its, at the board and all the different, uh, the, the different areas of the survey agency. But I would say another five to seven weeks. Is the mock survey for Medicare on review for residents? The mock survey is um, not on review for residents. And I hope that you can appreciate that it's um, um, protected under, under the quality assurance program that we have. If we release it to you, we have to release it to everybody, and we don't want to do that. Um, that's, it's, uh, the, the mock surveys are the quality assurance programs. You open up your flanks wide and say, here, look at this. Uh, you don't want to do that to the surveyors. <laughs> so so um, there, it actually, I, I, can, I can assure you that uh, the, the program that, Charles, that, that the Mary Charles Group did um, had very, very good results. We had very few recommendations in the area of our clinical areas. Lacey has some areas in life safety that he's working on with fire doors and firewalls and some fire drills and those sorts of areas. But um, clinically, we did very, very well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Think of the mock survey as a, a learning tool, really, what it really is for us to learn, open up where we are in this process of getting certified and so it's a very intense, very detailed report that we use internally. Anything else you want to address? Another question. I know that we're going to have another meeting with regard to the assisted living talking about priorities and um, various other uh, features but I'd like to maybe today to find some uh, information with regard when do you think these the 23 rooms will be open and anything else well you go ahead okay <laughs> the latest date I've heard is the June July time frame and as each day goes by we get a better feel of how close and how accurate that date's going to be and as, as we know when the date will be you'll be the first to know as well the other question I had was, uh, 
at the other meeting, I'm sure you'll talk about what type of additional services will be provided uh, uh, in assisted living, is that correct? The additional services will be what they are now in assisted living. Um, I would add to, if you have not been to an assisted living tour, I would encourage you to you know, talk to somebody, Tamika, talk to Tamika, and she'll set up a time where you can actually walk through assisted living and see what it's like going, what's like now and what the new rooms are going to be as well. I've, I've heard through the, kind of through the grapevine that people have said, well, we don't know what the new place is going to look like. Well, right now, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like either because a lot of it's still in construction. But I know our plan is at some point to do tours, to actually let you have an open house and come through and get a chance to see what the rooms are like, what the common spaces are going to be like, so you really get a, get a knowledge and an understanding of what it's going to be like. So when you reach that point in, in your continuum of traversing, you'll know what you're going to be walking into and living to as well. Other questions? Before we move on about that, no. just going to get the microphone. Hold on. In order to make uh, reservations in a timely manner at Prima, <clears throat> is it possible to get uh, a menu posted on a computer uh, a little ahead of time? Because most of the time it's not available. Okay, I'm going to hold on that question until. Jim has a conversation in a few minutes about what's happening in the dining, and he'll probably address that too. Okay. Other questions for, for Dan or Tamika at this point? Okay, good. Let's bring up. I know Sharon. Sharon Brown here today. Oh, she snuck out. She didn't want to tell me. She's looking for pillows. She's looking for pillows. She's looking for pillows. Okay. <laughs> Heather's in the front row here. She's smiling. Can't wait to talk again. I told her she was so excited today to do this. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. This is my my second town hall. Um, I found out that this happens every month, and I've got to come up with some some news to share with you. So I'm excited to be back here again. And for those of you um, that maybe weren't part of the town hall last month, when I did my introduction, just I'll quickly reintroduce myself. Um, I started here at Cedar Field on January 9th, so not quite two months ago. It has been a whirlwind since I started. I've enjoyed every day. It's, the days go by very quickly here. There's lots to do and lots to learn. Um, a little bit on my, my background, I come out of a sales and marketing and hospitality and fundraising background. So I feel like Cedar Field's been a really good fit and I've really enjoyed getting to know everyone and, and I will continue to learn. I have so much more to learn. Um, um, and just being part of the community, both from the residents' perspective and with, with the team I work with here as well. Um, I was excited to see the um, new information come out for March in terms of what's happening here. I will put in a little plug for myself. I am a huge college basketball fan. So for those of you, I was very excited to see that March Madness will get a lot of attention here at Cedar Field. I would like to put in a plug for my alma mater, Marquette, number six in the country right now, Big East champions as of last night. So if, if you're filling out your bracket, you can be assured I will have Marquette going all the way, and one of these years it's going to pay off. So I'm hoping this is the year I've got the best chance. So if you want to join me on that bandwagon, I would love to have you. Um, a couple things to share with you that have uh, been I've been working on since I was last here. One is I want to let everyone know that I have taken the torch back from Eleanor on the internal move process. So that was something Eleanor was helping out in the interim to keep moving forward, and it's back in marketing. So those of you that are either on the internal move list for independent living or are thinking about it or want to know more, I'm the person you want to talk to. I'd be happy to sit down with you and, and go over that process and answer any questions you have. You can stop by the office or give me a call. So I want to make sure everyone knows that. And then the second is I've been working on with Florence and her team and some of the other staff 
and also some of the residents on really taking a closer look at the new resident orientation. So I'll be looking at you know key components of the marketing process and, and starting with that and really seeing what are we doing now, what could we be doing better, what's working really well, and so we've had some really good input input from the from the team. And I also want to thank um, the residents I met with last week, um, Nellie Keener, Mary Ellen. Um, AC and Ann Ward for really giving me a wonderful overview of the Welcome Committee and the Ambassador Program, and I'm really excited about working with all of them moving forward and everyone else who is an ambassador to help us make sure that all the new residents feel really welcome here. So that is on, on deck to really get that process in really good shape. Um, so a big thank you to everyone for their help. And I also, in terms of saying thank you, I just want to thank every resident who stopped me in the hallway or come in my office or called to introduce yourselves. Tell me a little bit about your experience here at Cedarfield. The good and the bad and everything, all of it has been so valuable to help me get um, my feet on the ground here. And I welcome that to continue. So my door is open. If you see me in the hall, um, please stop me and introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about yourself that every day I feel like I'm learning something new and it's just building on top of each other to really paint a wonderful picture of this community. So with that, I'll turn it over any questions. No. Okay, yay. <laughs> Oh, the occupancy is currently at 96% at for independent living. People are looking for two bedrooms primarily. Um, we do still have a handful of some one bedroom units. We have had some interest lately, which is good. It sort of ebbs and flows. Um, but the, the primary thing that we are hearing time and again um, People are interested in some of the larger two bedrooms, which we know are a little harder to come by. So we're, we're doing our best we can to manage expectations for those individuals. Um, and, and that may shift in the months to come. It may go back to one bedrooms, but for right, right now, um, that seems to be what people are, are looking for. So. I have a question. Yes. Um, here I come. Sorry. Um, as a resident, if I should be looking, I live in a cottage. If I should be looking for an apartment, mm -hmm. and I want a two bedroom, mm -hmm. but there are people out there who want to move into Cedarfield who are not residents here yet, mm -hmm. and they want the two bedroom. Who gets the priority? You do. So that is that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that up. All of you are the number one priority here. So as units become available, we go to the internal move wait list first. And until we clear that and make sure that nobody wants a particular unit that might be currently available, it's once we know that for certain, then we move to our external wait list and give them the opportunity. So it is important, that's a good point, to say if, if you have that consideration, even if you're not 100% sure, it's better to get on that list, the internal list. Um, and you can always decline, and it doesn't hurt your spot on the list. You would just say, no, I'm not ready, but you would remain on the list. Okay, that would be a change from the way this was done in the past. And that before it was based on, it was described as when you showed interest in Cedarfield, i.e. when you put your thousand dollars down and you go on the list based on when that happened. Yes, that, that is. That could happen 10 years before you move in. So somebody who moved, moved in before you would not be a priority over the outsider if they put their thousand dollars down first. So can we clarify that point? Yes. So the your your kind of priority on the internal wait list is based on when you did um, first express interest in Cedarfield. Yes. But what I was saying is if you choose not to move forward on something that's offered, it doesn't impact that placement. Right. Right. Yeah. Good questions. Okay. 
pass it on. Thank you. You put her on the spot pretty good, and she did quite well. <laughs> you know, I didn't say it, but when, she, when Heather mentioned that uh, she was taking back the internal transfers, Eleanor was in the back room doing the best happy dance I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, we had a little question about dining. So, Jim, you ready? Yes. Dave Stewart is uh, not here this afternoon, so the gym is stepping in, as he would say, shorter and more handsome. Is that what he said? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody was calling me Steve what, the night before last. I'm not sure why. We look alike, but, you know. <laughs> So I think everybody knows me. I've probably talked to everybody in there, but if there's anybody who doesn't, my name is Jim Vernier. I'm the Assistant Director of Dining. And David uh, asked me not too long ago to step in, so I'll do the best I can. But Prima, that was actually all I was gonna talk about, uh, aside from any questions, is that we're reopening it tonight, and we absolutely will get on a better uh, rotation of getting the uh, daily specials uh, posted but uh, you know just to go back a little bit you know we opened it and you know staffing caused us to close it again so we really were trying to come up with a, a better more sustainable way of doing this so that you know if staffing rears its ugly head again that we'll be okay with it but uh, uh, you know years past when we first opened the whole dining room was fine dining and uh, when we uh, went to the uh, we, we did our uh, construction and added on to the building and added in the pub and the grill. We, we wanted to have two options and so we're excited to get that back again and appreciate people being so, so patient. Uh, we decided, you know, first we're going to at least initially uh, start out with just three days a week and if it proves to be, uh, you know, successful we'll go ahead and, you know, expand from there. Uh, we spent a lot of time working with the resident food committee and talking to residents and we had several. We came up with the idea of our, how we were going to do the menu this time around from talking to a number of different residents who came by and talked to us or talked to me in the dining room. I uh, felt like that they really liked the pub and the menu that we serve in the pub and the grill because it's so expansive and changes so much. And that was probably the one negative that we had with Prima was that it was a more limited menu and it didn't change as much. So. We decided that I think it's we can use that menu in Prima, but have some really nice daily specials every day that'll that'll change. That'll provide the uh, type of uh, variety that I think people have come to know and expect, and and then still uh, add that more uh, elegant and gracious style of, of service. And so. Tonight, we're first night, uh, and we will continue forward. You know, we think it's going to be a, a, a much better design. We, as I think a few people have noticed, we moved most of our production back into the back kitchen, which was our original kitchen. And we did that because the, the, the equipment, the layout, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a much better, more uh, capable kitchen than what we have out front, and pe we've become very popular, you know, we're very busy every night and we want to make sure we're putting our best foot forward. And also, then we can just use one kitchen, one set of staff to provide the two different dining concepts. Uh, so we're pretty excited about it and we'll, you know, field all kinds of questions. I'll talk to people, we'll, we'll listen and adjust and, and come up with better ideas. But yeah, we were a little remiss. Chef had been off, David had been off, and so we just didn't get those specials posted up as quickly as we should have. But they're going to be good. I mean, tonight, I shouldn't know, I don't even know if I should say this, but we have fried uh, soft shell crabs and steak Diane with uh, tenderloin, so that'll be very nice. Uh, so a couple of really good specials, and then, of course, our, our, our normal everyday menu. Uh, I guess one other thing I can mention that is kind of tied in, you know, staffing, I get asked quite often in the dining room about how you doing with staffing. We're doing pretty darn good right now. We really are at nearly full staff uh, for the, in, in the front of the house, and I think Chef Tyrone's uh, pretty close in the back of the house as well, hence why we're able to go ahead and move forward with this. But uh, none of us think that this is going to be necessarily the end of it. You know, I mean, staffing, I think, is going to continue to be a challenge, and so we really think that this concept of the way we're going to try to do it, at least this time around, is going to be more sustainable. 
and uh, offer the most amount of choice. And of course, we'll we'll put our best foot forward with our with our uh, current staff to do, provide that real gracious style of service, and you know, and, and everything that goes with that dining venue. And it'll then present our multiple dining venues like we have decided. You know, we started out with that were before COVID reared its ugly head and messed everything up. So uh, uh, that was really about all I had to say. I kind of walked through that pretty quickly because I'm nervous. I don't know why I talk to everybody all night. So just <laughs> <laughs> Probably talk to as many people every night, but not all at once. So and does anybody have any other questions, things I can answer? Uh, what about posting the menus in a timely manner? That's what I said. We. We were a mess. We didn't get this today's menu up quickly. We, it'll go in our normal weekly uh, uh, daily special uh, showcase uh, printout. Krupa will get it our, in our, uh, our 973 and, and, and so on and so forth. I apologize. We just didn't get it up as quickly as we should have. It snuck up on us. We'll blame Monty Gras. <laughs> Are you going to be able to book Prima online? Actually? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it hasn't happened yet, I don't think. Mm, I don't know, I'll check. We also, I have, again, I think it snuck up on us a bit, but absolutely. Sure. With the Prima being open for just three days, with a limited capacity in the dining room area, how are you going to make sure everybody who wants to get in can get in, as opposed to somebody can you know, book, book, book five days in a row for Prima? Is that going to be watched somehow? So, oh, Yeah, we'll monitor that. And if it proves to be necessary, we'll put some guidelines around it. Uh, you know, we always try to have as many options for people and have it be as open as possible and accommodate everybody that we can. Our, my hostess staff or our hostess staff, as you know, they're wonderful and they do yeoman's work on trying to make sure that we can fit everybody that we possibly can squeeze in at any given night time uh, or work with individuals. They're, they're pretty wonderful. I could, couldn't do their job nearly as well as they do. So if I try to book five days in a row, you won't let me? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> if it proves to be a problem, we'll, we'll figure it out. Because so. <laughs> we do want it to be fair, and we want as many people to enjoy it as, 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 as they as wants to on any given night. So you may not be able to get the... Usually we don't have too much problem except for the end of February, <laughs> you know, which is always a busy time, getting everybody in who wants to come in. Uh, we just can't always get the exact time that people want. But we, we work it out. I have a question, and I'm sorry, but I don't go up to the dining room very often. But when I do, I find that I am served too much food. And um, number one, I would like it explained again why we can't take something home, particularly on pizza night. Um, because I can't eat even a small pizza, the whole thing. <clears throat> and is there, I think someone mentioned to me that you asked for a small plate, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It's funny, they, you know, in a restaurant, our biggest, their biggest challenge is serving people enough food that they'll be satisfied. And with us, getting portions small enough for people to be, you know, comfortable with it is, is always been a challenge. But yes, just ask your server for a small portion. And if it's an item that we can do it on, we will. Uh, or to the best of our ability, you know, a lamb shank is just, there's no way to make it any smaller than what it is. Uh, now, as far as taking food home, when we, re when we opened Cedar Field 28 years, 27 years ago, we, we came up with the concept of this, and I think we were one of the first, if not the first in the country to create a restaurant. And we wanted people to be able to eat as much as they want when they come to the dining room. And, and whereas most people want smaller portions, and we have a few who really take advantage and really enjoy sitting down and eating 
you know, more than one entree or quite a bit, and, 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 and that's a real plus. We have to manage your money, and we try very hard to provide some really nice foods and things. So when you're in the dining room, you're limited by as much as you can eat. And you're welcome to eat as much as you want or you can, but if you're uh, taking it home, then you're only limited by how much you can carry. And that's gonna really negatively affect the uh, how, what we could offer, the types of foods that we could offer, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So that's been you know something that we established at the very beginning. Uh, many facilities, at least in the past, and I think they are starting to change now, would limit what you could order in the dining room, and, and we don't, so and never have. So that's why we ask that you order what you can, enjoy as much as you can. You can still have dessert, as I've said many times. <laughs> You've earned the right to have dessert, even if you didn't clean your plate. You know, and if, if I come across the pillows in the dining room, which is possible, I'll, I'll bring them back. <laughs> okay. Lacey, how are you doing today? Good. All right, good afternoon. Um, I guess I'll just do a real quick update, and like always, if there's any specific questions, I know there may be a lot of specific questions on what's going on with the work order or something going on. I'll hang out a little while after the meeting if there, somebody wants to come up and ask specific questions. But um, real quick, I guess the first thing is uh, thank you to Lori. Uh, we just had a big move um, over to assisted living. Um, she had a lot of work. I think everything went pretty well. It's, we have a little kinks we're trying to work out. There's some problems we're trying to fix. Um, but for the most part, everybody has been moved. Um, that was, I guess, once construction's over, we'll be moving the residents back. Um, to go over our work orders in February, I kind of do this every month. We had 1,223 total work orders in progress during the month of February. And of those, 73% um, were completed within two days. So we're showing improvement. We, um, we're trying to get better, but I think in the month of January, we were around 69% completed within two days. So we are showing improvement. Um, that's pretty good considering we really have the guys working hard on getting the Medicare um, certification and getting the life safety things up to speed. Kind of. Um, following up on with Tamika, I think we're ready for the certification, but just some little things we just need to touch up. Um, and really the only other thing I guess I can talk about real quick just because it's come up, the admin door, the guys are going to be coming in tomorrow to install the automatic um, door opener in the admin door. Uh, and then they're also, I have the contractor meeting me in the afternoon to look at the doors on um, D wing and then the C D wing, the um, outside door. And um, like I said, I think that's really real quick where we are. Is it are we going to be able to use the admin door tomorrow when they work? Oh yeah, them? oh yeah. Will you yeah. repeat the question, Lacey? What? Yep. So, question with the admin door. They're working on it tomorrow to put that automatic door opener on. They're probably going to be here right at eight o'clock. But we'll. I'm. We'll meet with. We'll make sure that door is accessible, so they'll be able to get out of the way when you what need is to. The admin, the admin, right where the marketing office is, through the admin parking lot. Administration. 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 Oh. Admin. Clean up 
all around the pond. It is not a disgrace, but it, the trees and the limbs that have been knocked down, there are possibly well over a hundred trees down all around the pond. It uh, needs a lot of work. Oh, so that uh, that's a sensitive subject for us. So the uh, <laughs> we 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 first time when we first found out about the beavers, just to give everybody kind of update where we are. Uh, we actually removed two beavers. The uh, contractor trapped them and removed two beavers. And I bet it wasn't a week until the third beaver showed up. And then I think. Um, Somebody, I think it was Ann Williams, called me to tell me that they saw a beaver on the side of the road on three chop. We thought that was the beaver. It's, it's not. So uh, the third beaver, the, the company came out and they set the traps actually today to get rid of the, uh, the third beaver. And hopefully no more keep showing up. Uh, so this will be a third one. And we have pictures. So they showed me. They have pictures of the first two that were removed. Um, as far as cleaning up around the around the pond, we actually have a proposal to clean up around the pond. Get you know, knock all the tree, you know, clean just clean up around the pond. And we have a proposal to start restocking the pond. But the idea is we just need to get rid of the beavers first um, before, especially before we start cleaning up cleaning up the limbs. So that is in place. We just need to get rid of the beaver first. <laughs> Uh, we'd appreciate an update on the chargers for the electric vehicles and placement. So, yeah, as far as the chargers, we, we're trying to um, emulate a little bit what Windsor Mead is doing the same chargers. I think the conversation, we're supposed to have a meeting on Monday, Monday afternoon, to really start finalizing the exact plan. Um, Windsor Mead is installing the, the slow charge, I think they call it trickle charge or slow charge. I think it's seven, six or seven hours to fully charge a vehicle. Um, the conversation here has been we want to install the fast charge. So that'll be the conversation brought up Monday afternoon when we meet. And then the location, um, my plan, the location where, where, we, where we're going to install the generator for D-Wing is right down the hill, the first parking spot would be the next couple parking space because we can run the electric right with the generator power. Um, I've, I've been told that may not be the best location, so we just need to, that'll be something else we talk about on Monday to make sure it, it that's the logical place as far as the electric goes and where the power supply is and where we have to run instead of trying to go anywhere else. But we'll, everything is still under review right now, nothing's. You, you mentioned your goal that you hit 73 percent within two days on work orders what's your overall goal so um, yeah we we've talked about it before our overall goal is to try to get at least to address everybody 90 percent within two days to address on work orders and we're, we're getting there hopefully everybody sees the response time is a lot quicker it's slowed down, like I said, a little bit, trying to take care of Medicare, um, some items. We've had to pull the guys off to take care of some of the issues, but we 90% is the goal. My question is not specifically for you, but more for you. Um, talking about that parking lot near CND. Mm -hmm. A lot of employees have started parking there on a daily basis. And when the employees aren't parked there, there is something like 10 spaces available. The employees take up everything that's available and then you can come back with your car and you end up having to go down Parkview to park. And um, it's not that I mind that the employees are parking there, but just that they're taking up all of the residents' parking places. And 
I don't know what can be done about that or even why they're starting to park down there again. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting that you bring that question up. We actually talked about it this morning in our leadership meeting where it came up for discussion. And what I heard there, I'm not going to say what I really heard because I need to do some research to find out when it started happening and why it started happening. But I have heard from several folks that this has become an issue down there. Oh, it's happened off and on for quite a while. Okay, so I just need to do a little more research before I can really come back with a good solid answer for that. But thanks for bringing it up. One more, one more follow up back here. Yes. Uh, with the charging station anticipated, does that mean loss of two or three parking spaces? It potentially could. It just depends on where we put them and how many electrical vehicles we have on campus. It'll be a challenge. Yes. As we see more and more people get an electric vehicle, we have to figure out how do we accommodate them. Not a question, just a comment. In talking about parking, I've noticed that there are many residents that seem to be parking for long periods of time up at the front of the building. And just a reminder, there was a policy some time ago asking us to park no more than two hours at the front so that guests and people from the cottages will have a space to park. Thank you. Just two comments. We've been talking about this charging station. And at a previous meeting, I believe it was mentioned that they were quite expensive. I forgot, it was either 5000 or 50000 It was a shock to numbers. And a very limited number of cars. Now, people that have got or get an electric car, the other challenges they're facing, I'm sure there will be all kind of charging stations off campus. I go off campus to fuel my car. Maybe they're going to have to go off campus before we spend that kind of money to fuel their car. Or you can put a gas station here for me. <laughs> and, a diesel, and a diesel gas pump for the guys with the big... <laughs> now, That's second, a good point. Second point. Well, be a I charge. keep getting the impression that Heritage Pro Therapy is one service available to us. Now we have Affirmation hey, Hope. Affirmation Health. And Sugarfield let these two get in competition or conflict with each other. Would you address that? Let me hit the first one first about the uh, charging stations. Um, I think as time evolves, we're going to see more people get an electric vehicle. And so as we continue to provide services to the residents on campus, we have to continue to look to the future and what we need to have on campus available. So if we put a charging station on, or two, or three, or four, whatever the demand is, um, we have to look seriously where we put them so we accommodate the residents who live in different parts of the campus. You also have to keep in mind if you go off campus to buy your gas, you pay for your gas, right? How are we going to charge for people charging on campus to use this amenity to make sure it's not just a cost drain on us as well? Okay. Um, Affirmation Health and Health Pro, it's they're similar, but they are very different. I mean, the folks on campus are, are working with the residents on campus who require physical therapy, occupational therapy. Affirmation Health is geared towards helping the folks who are in their home. They can be on campus in their apartment, don't want to come down to the therapy area, so they choose to have Affirmation Health come to their home to provide services. Are they competition? I suppose you could look at it in, in one sense of the word they are, but we look at it more as providing increased services available to the residents in a variety of ways to meet your needs. Good question. Thanks. I actually used affirmation help when I couldn't leave my cottage. And they, you, you can only use it for a certain amount of time. And then you have, they release you and then you have to get your physical therapy up here. At least that was my case. 
We actually had lunch today with representatives from Affirmation Health, and they talked about that specifically, that they work in coordination with the on-campus therapy group to take you as a resident as far as they can in your home, and then they release you to the next group of therapists to do that. So they work in coordination to do that. If you can get down here for therapy, it's not a bad thing, but if you choose to stay home, it's the option you can have as well. I think one confusion sometimes arises when people think they're signing up for therapy through Heritage Pro Health and then all of a sudden affirmation is at their door and they don't understand why that's happened. I'm not sure how that happens. I'll <laughs> have, you know, have to do a little more research on that as well. Too. Yeah. We actually, in, in our meeting at lunch today, we talked about a lot of information that we shared amongst our team and their team and we realized there's a lot of lack of knowledge on both sides on who does what and so they agreed to come at some point in time and do an educational session uh, much like they did a couple of weeks down down the clubhouse for some different areas so they are going to be doing that in the future we'll let you know when that's going to be to come in here and actually set up a time you can come in and ask questions and they can talk about what they do the differences what they have between what they do in your home and what happens on, on campus here. I heard a rumor just recently that there might be some change. Health Pro Heritage is a contractor with Cedarfield. I heard there might be a change in the leadership or maybe, I don't know the facts, it was clearly a rumor. Uh, Penny Eisenberg, who is the director she is no longer on campus. They are searching to find somebody to come and take her place. So the rumor that you heard that Penny's not here is, is true. Then what about Vlad and Tracy? And because I thought they all worked for her or her company. Yeah, they do work for her company and they are still here. There's no change in that level. They will stay, correct? If they choose personally to stay, yeah. I mean, we're not changing companies at all, no. It was just a change that Penny is no longer with the organization. Everybody else, to my knowledge, is staying with the group. Because we're not changing the contractor at all. Okay, moving on. Florence. Hello, I'm Florence Brooks, Director of Lifestyles and Wellness. I have an update on the pillow caper. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately 50% of the pillows have been located in the maintenance room. <laughs> If anyone has information on the others, please see Lexi. <laughs> um, someone asked earlier about assisted living. There is going to be a program, a, um, a panel on Monday, March 13th at 2 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall talking about assisted living services and some of the uh, resident or maybe a family member are going to talk a little bit about their experience. So I encourage you to attend. If you're interested in assisted living, I believe that there will also be an opportunity out of that to sign up for tours of that area, just to put that on your radar. Um, also, the telephone directory, send out a telephone directory three times a year. Normally there's one that comes out in February. We were waiting for the moves that were taking place in the licensed areas to take place so that information could be current. So we're hoping that direct will be finalized this week and distributed. I want to share with you a few, uh, a little bit of data from my area just so you can un um, get a glimpse of a little bit about the impact that you all have on us and that hopefully our team has on you. In Pathways to Wellness, 140 residents turned in pre-registration forms in the month of March, which, which was an increase of 40 forms for March. In March, there are 12 trips planned 
nine are programs, three are series, there's four new art workshops, 16 resident run programs, three evening entertainers, 33 in-house programs, and then an additional 22 programs, which include everything from speakers to art movies to lunch and learns to socials and handbell practices. So there's lots going on in that area. Pastoral Services reports an average Sunday worship for the month of February of 63, an Ash Wednesday service attendance of 82. There were six memorial events in February. The Coping with Loss support group had 11 in attendance. And between the Shabbat, the monthly Shabbat, monthly Catholic Mass, and monthly Holy Communion and Healing Prayer, there were 38 residents in attendance at those events. Transportation in the month of February had 157 medical trips, in addition to 42 concierge trips, which is planes, trains, private bookings, 15 lifestyles and wellness offerings, nine drives and special outings for licensed areas, and 10 shopping trips. The clinic's data is a little bit takes a little more time for it to um, come together. So I could give you the best glimpse by going back to December. But in the month of December, the clinic reported 232 visits to see the clinic nurse, which included COVID testing, blood pressure checks, dressing changes, pre-move-in visits, and the phlebotomist. 124 residents came for appointments with the physicians, 46 labs were drawn, 119 vials of life were updated, and 74 apartment and cottage visits were made by the clinic team during the eight to four schedule. That doesn't include the after hours supervisor visits. So that just gives you a sense that there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, what kind of questions do you have? Oh, wow, I like that. Okay, so now, who can tell me what the a question that I care for? Oh, okay. Just, I'm sorry. Assistant Living would like a little bit more clarification on whether they will get a response to what they signed up to. Some of them don't remember what they signed up for, the different, uh, different activities that were coming up that required uh, sign-ups. So they it should be. It would be appreciated if they could get a note saying you've been accepted and here's your schedule, kind of a thing. Great. They should be getting that. So I'll check and make sure. Whenever you sign up on the form in advance, that's put back in your box and confirmed whether or not. Yeah. I will check. Looking for confirmation, especially with all the changes. Maybe paperwork's been put in the wrong box. Okay. Thank I'll you check on that. Well. Great. Anything else? Okay, here's your question. Who can tell me what the number one song was in 1950? Three guesses. What's the first one? No, guess again. No, guess again. No, here's a hint. It includes a woman's name. Good night, Irene. <laughs> That's a good sign off. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> okay, that's Allison. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Allison Zack. I serve as your director of philanthropy here. I'm going to try to make this quick because I know we're closing in on the hour. First of all, I want to say thank you for all the gifts to the Angel Fund. Two weeks ago, we were in the middle of our campaign, and on behalf of the Resident Council Religious Life um, Committee, we have wrapped that up. We're still in the process of counting, but it looks like we're just shy of $20,000, so that's amazing. Great work, everybody, so congratulations. The box is still out there. I want to let you know that while we make our push and our communications in February, the gifts are always welcome any time of the year. Um, we've had some wonderful gifts given um, from family members when their um, loved ones have passed away. So just know that this is something you can participate in outside of the month of February. 
Um, if you haven't had a chance during this gorgeous weather, please go visit the Secret Garden. I'm happy to give little tours if anyone wants to see it. Um, the birdhouses are up and the um, uh, structures for the arbors are up and it's really starting to come together. We're a little bit nervous about planting. Beth, Beth keeps reminding me that we're going to get a, that frost that the weatherman is threatening that's going to come. But we think we're going to uh, plan for a May 22nd grand opening garden party. So mark your calendars for that. A um, couple other dates for you to consider. Uh, March 9th, we're going to continue the theme of March Madness. The Cedar Chest is having a half price sale. There will be more information about that coming to you via Touchtown. But if you're a Cedar Chest nut, um, please put that date on your calendar. On March 22nd, we'll be um, unveiling the winners of the Cedarfield Scholarship Award at the Resident Council meeting, so please come and cheer them on. You all are amazing talent spotters. A lot of the folks that we have talked to have said, I never thought about this until so-and-so talked to me about it. So continue, continue reaching out to our team members and continue to support those you know who have received scholarships and tell them that you're thinking about them. Give them that encouragement. And then finally, on March 29th, um, I'm hosting a workshop on estate planning. So the information is in the informer, but we'd love to have you join us. And finally, it's tax time, right? So if your financial planner, your accountant tells you that you have a little extra money that you need to stash away before <laughs> April 15th, my office is always open to you. I would love to chat with you about opportunities for you to support the mission here at Cedarfield and do something good for um, your neighbors here. So thank you. Any questions? Okay, great. See, we're always after your money, right? <laughs> in a good way, though, in a great way. Uh, Stephanie Brookhume is not here today. She's our Director of Human Resources. Just a couple quick things to point out. We are down to less than actually five open full-time positions across campus. So we have just done an amazing job of filling our staff slots and going forward. Turnover is always something of a concern. We're less than 5% turnover on our staff, so we're doing a good job of hiring the right people and retaining these folks. I think we're going, going great guns in the, in the right direction going forward there. A couple other quick updates. A few of you have been involved meeting with me and uh, talking about renovation for the lobby area as well as this room. I am meeting tomorrow morning with the decorator who we are working with, with the, the town center, which is the lobby area. Um, first meeting, she's going to bring me up to date on what we've talked about in the past. After that meeting, we'll get the committee back together to make um, suggestions going forward on what's going to happen in that area as well. In this area, um, the committee has also come up with some good ideas on what we need to do in this room. That committee, again, will be getting together to talk more about this going forward, too. A big chunk of what we're looking in this room is, see this little camera in front of me and there's a microphone that I'm stuck at right here. I'm a walker. I like to walk and talk and I like to have a camera that will follow me around. We have determined that is something we want to have going forward as well. The challenge there is it costs a lot of money to do it. So we're looking to actually in the future, not to dis too distant future, possibly considering a capital campaign to raise some money to help with that part of the budget for this, this room as well. To do that, I need to talk to folks who have a knowledge of audio, visual, acoustics, that kind of a deal. We have a, um, a, a contractor provider who does it, but I'd like to hear from you. You all have backgrounds and experience in doing different things in your careers. If you have knowledge of audio, visual, acoustics, I'd like to talk to you and see what your thoughts are in doing this and also look for a champion to help working with myself and Allison going forward to see what kind of money we can raise to help offset the cost for upgrading this and that and these in this room here going forward. Uh, convenience store. I also have another we have a question back there. Bob. You mentioned the lobby area and this room but you didn't mention the library or the chapel. We've been waiting for the library for several years. Okay. I did not include it in my comments, but it is part of the town center that we call. It'll be the library, the lobby, the room right across the hall here. It used to be the art room, now it's the interfaith room, as well as the chapel and upstairs in that area up there as well. So that include all of that. That's the town center 
that's be incorporated. Plus the restrooms here and down at the end of the hall too. So yeah. it's a big project for a small area, but we're looking at really bringing it up to more modern look and appeal, sustainable for the future as well. Okay. Convenience store. Um, have a committee working on that too. We are looking at re re-energizing the, the gift shop down by the Atrium Cafe. We have some things in there now, but I know in the past it's been much more. We want to bring that back to what it was in the past and maybe even more. So we have a committee working with myself and some of the leadership team to bring that back. We met just before this meeting actually to talk about this and I have a lot of energy in the, in the, in the residents who are participating in that committee, but we need more. So we have, I think, roughly 20 volunteers on that committee. We could use a lot more as you look to really energize that store down there. We want that to be a resident run, resident managed with some oversight from leadership here, but really to be your gift shop. What do you want in that gift shop? How do you want to run that gift shop? All that kind of a deal. So we need more people to volunteer. So is Kathy McCormick here? She didn't want to get inundated with volunteers. Anyways, if you're interested in volunteering, contact Kathy McCormick. She'd be happy to get you on the list and get you involved in it. We're going to need people to understand marketing, advertising, you know, stock, stocking shelves, purchasing, all those kind of little things that we need to do to make sure this can run as efficiently and effectively as it can. Mainly set out to be an amenity for you folks, but also if we make some money on the deal, we'll have some cash that we can donate to our cause. Part of the committee's decision will be where is that cost? How is that money going to be donated to do that too? So keep that in mind as we go forward. Question I had about when the store is not open, how do you get your medicines from the pharmacist? We're going to put a better sign on the door, but if it's between 10 and 3, the pharmacist will be there. You're going to have to knock on the door real loud or give them a call. Or some of you know the shortcut I get through, there's a back door you can kind of sneak back in and knock on that door and the pharmacist will be there and he'll take care of you and make sure you get your medicines as well. Okay. That's all I have for update. Any other general questions for myself or the rest of the team that are here? You already had your one question. You're done. <laughs> you have to pay for this one, John. <laughs> it's been very noticeable that there has been no posting of COVID for the last couple of weeks. I hope that means that we have none. And the question is, if we have none, then nothing is posted. But it would be nice to see the other zeros up there. Very true. Okay. Are we still at zero? We're still at zero. We're still at zero. So we have zero agency, zero COVID. <laughs> but I agree, we, we still probably should post it up there. We should celebrate the fact that everybody's being healthy. Yeah, I agree. Other questions or comments? Okay, I have one question for you. After all of this today, do you feel well informed? Yeah. Good. Tell your neighbors. Watch it on TV so they get up to date as well. Thank you.